is by Sega. Hey, what is up, players? This is another episode of the Sega Holic. In episode 61, we learn how to make perfect Wii and GameCube backups. Hey, thanks, Siri. We know how much the Holics loved you the last time you were here. Anyways, first things first. Great thing about Wii Homebrew is that we can use the Wii itself for ripping Wii as well as GameCube games. Other than the actual games, we will need media in which the games are written to by the Wii. Add a 64GB micro SD card lying around and chose to use that along with a USB adapter to use in one of the Wii's rear USB ports. Moving to the PC, we need to format the micro SD card to NTFS for the Wii's ripping app to recognize the card. NTFS is chosen instead of FAT32 because FAT32 has a 32GB partition limit. Here I'm using Windows Vista. In Vista, to format a disk, double click My Computer, then right click on the SD card and click Format. For allocation size, choose Default and check Quick Format. After formatting is done, two DAT files that contain checksum information are put to the root directory of the card. The checksums are used to verify if the RIP is bit for bit perfect. You can download the DAT files from redump.org and the links are in the video description. Now we need to get the SD card from the front of the Wii that we used in episode 59 on the initial soft mod of the Wii. On the SD card, we will install the Clean Rip app, which has a link in the video description. To install any app into the Homebrew app folder, simply drag and drop the folder that contains the XML, DAW, and PNG files into the apps folder on the SD card. Here I'm just verifying that the folder that I'm dragging into the apps folder has the three files. Now we can safely eject the cards and install them on the Wii. Make sure to install the USB device on the USB port that's closest to the edge. After turning on the Wii, run the homebrew channel and load clean rip. After acknowledging the disclaimer, choose USB, NTFS, confirm the USB device is inserted and mounted, and then choose No, and then insert a Wii disk on this screen, and then press A. After the disk initializes, choose the size of the disk, the chunk size is max, and No for new device per chunk. After pressing A, the rip will start. The rip takes about 15 minutes to complete. When the rip is complete, it will show an MD5 checksum. And if the game is in the database, show if it verified OK. If the game is not on the database, you can go to Game TDB to verify checksums. Ripping GameCube games are done like Wii games, but it does not have the Disk Ripper setup screen. You can have the disk already inserted, and ripping times are typically around 9 minutes. Once we finish ripping the games we want, we can take the USB card from the back of the Wii and archive the rips as you wish on your PC. There is going to be three files per game. One is the game ISO, the second is a DCA file that contains copyright protection, and the last is a text file generated by CleanRip that contains information about the game and various checksums from the rip. You can double check MD5 values with Microsoft's official FCIV utility. 
which I have linked in the video description. To use it, you must have the file you are verifying and the fciv.exe file on the same directory. Obviously, both are on my desktop. The utility is run from the command prompt, and once that is open, the directory on the command prompt must be changed to the directory where the utility and ISO file are at. Again, in this case, it's my desktop. To change directories, type cd space desktop and hit enter. Next, type fciv.exe space then the name of the ISO file including the .iso suffix. Then press enter. Depending on the size of the ISO file, it may take several minutes. Once the MD5 checksum is generated, we can compare and verify with the checksum on a dump info text file. Here you can see that the integrity of the ISO file is confirmed with the known good MD5 checksum. On a Mac, generating an MD5 checksum from a file is much simpler. Just open up the terminal app, type MD5, then press space, then drag and drop the file from any directory to the terminal window and hit enter. Again, it will take several minutes for the checksum to generate for larger files. Back on a PC, I'm just putting each set of files in a folder. At this point, you can save and archive these files, but for loading the ISO files back to USB media for use by USB loaders, you may notice that the Wii games are full-sized DVD files at roughly 4.3 gigabytes. GameCube ISOs ripped by CleanRip are roughly full-sized mini DVDs at 1.3 gigabytes. Dummy information is put on the disc, so most of the space on the disc is written to. Luckily, you can remove the scrubbed space and shrink these ISOs, although it is not recommended for GameCube ISOs. To remove the scrub data, we're going to use Wii Backup Manager, which is again linked in the video description. Wii Backup Manager is used to convert the ISO file to a WBFS file. To do this, select the Files tab and select your ISO file. Check the box next to the game and then click Transfer and select WFS file. Lastly, select the directory where the WBFS file will be written to. You can see the game file is now only 638 megabytes. We Backup Manager also created a folder that we can just drag and drop to our USB device. But first, we must format the USB device to FAT32. I chose FAT32 because the Nintendo app that is needed to play GameCube games only uses FAT32. To format the USB device, we again use Wii Backup Manager. For the USB device, I'm using a 64GB micro SD card with a USB adapter. Normally, you cannot format a card or disk drive with partitions over 32GB, but with Wii Backup Manager, you can. First select Tools in the menu, select Format Drives, then select your USB device in the pop-up box, next select FAT32, and finally select 32 kilobyte cluster size and hit Start. I don't know about potential data corruption issues later down the line, but I have not had issues with this micro SD card and a 160 gigabyte Western Digital external 2.5 inch disk drive. That said, I've experienced corrupting and compatibility issues with USB thumb drives when formatted in this fashion. Here, I'm just renaming the drive and confirming the space available. Again, normally, you cannot format a partition larger than 32 gigabytes for FAT32. When opening the formatted drive, we now see a WBFS folder on the root directory. We can now drag and drop the WBFS file along with its folder to this directory. For GameCube ISOs, we need to create a folder named Games on the root directory of the USB device. 
I'm just renaming my F0 folder properly with the naming style needed for USB loaders. Then drag and drop the GameCube ISO into the games folder. Next, rename the ISO file to game. Then create a folder with the game's name and ID in brackets as shown. Next, drag and drop the ISO file into the folder. To verify, there should be a games and WBFS folder in the root directory of the USB device. In the WBFS folder, should be a folder labeled with the game's name and in that folder there should be a WBFS file. In the games folder there should be a folder labeled with the game's name and in that folder there should be an ISO file. We can now eject the USB device and insert it into the Wii. Start up the Wii and load USB loader GX. Now choose List View and click on the cover to download cover art. Ghost Squad. The best thing about this is that Wii games run perfectly and have full compatibility. Squad. Ghost Squad on the Wii is pretty awesome. If you like Confidential Mission on a Dream Pass, you'll love this game. Just like Wii games, backup GameCube games run perfectly on USB loaders. One note on playing GameCube games. You will need a GameCube controller or a Classic or Classic Pro controller. Anyways, I hope some of you found this helpful or motivational. Come on, get out there and soft mod a Wii. If you haven't already, please subscribe and for loyal subscribers, again, thank you for all the support. Take care.